Okay. 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 So, I don't know that the, I don't know if I'll, I probably will not get to the last topic, the, the women in the priesthood. Um, but if you're really curious, again, there's a book there, The Catholic Priesthood and Women, A Guide to the Teaching of the Church. And, and we can just, I'll just summarize it real quickly. Uh, Jesus, we're told, marries the church on the cross. And if marriage is a male to a female, husband and wife, Jesus is the husband, the church is his wife, his spouse. And if the priest is standing in the place of Jesus, and the priest marries the church, then if she is female, then, then the priest uh, <coughs> was male. The other thing is that when Jesus give, gives us the, um, the priesthood, he does it at the Last Supper, and it's, it's his apostles that, uh, that are around the table. Again, there, there, uh, there's more to it, uh, and if you have questions or you, you really struggle with that, again, I'm willing to talk to you about that. But those are just like two sort of quick little hitters on that one. Uh, okay. The, the only other topic I, I wanted to put in there was the preferential option for the poor. And this is probably not like a thing that any of us really struggle with. Like most of us get it. Yeah, the, the, the poor, we need to have a preferential option for them. But like a lot of the topics that I just talk, talked about, this one can be politicized. Um, and so just want to, to stress that um, the church has always because Jesus always had a preferential option for the poor. He went to the people on the margins. Um, and Pope Francis has been wonderful in stressing that for us. Um, if you want to read a book that's really going to challenge you, Blessed Are You Poor by Father Thomas DeBay. And he takes all of the different um, uh, vocations, including the vocation of marriage, and he talks about how embracing gospel simplicity and gospel poverty is possible. And I have friends, um, they live near Lawrence, and they, uh, the, the, the wife gave me this book. When she read the book, it changed her life, and she and her husband decided, we're going we're gonna to live this out. And the simplicity that they live uh, is really quite amazing. Um, and they, they're happy... Uh, joy-filled people and their kids are happy, joy-filled people. So it is, it is possible. Um, but let just a, so there are eight um, paragraphs in the Catechism, which is I think more than almost any of these other topics that we brought up. Because um, again, it's it, it's important to the church and important to Jesus. Um, so first, the duty of the lay faithful. Lay faithful. Uh, the lay faithful have a responsibility to, to care for the poor and to work for social reform that can help to bring about greater peace and justice. Um, God, the, the blessing, blessing the poor, God blesses those who help the poor and rebukes those who do not. Um, and the church love for the poor is part of a constant tradition. The du duty of work flows from a love for the poor because the worker can give to those in need both materially, culturally, and religiously. And work helps to raise people out of poverty. Um, the church, church teaches against selfish uses of riches. Um, and so love for the poor is incompatible with a, a, a selfishness when it comes to our, our riches. Um, almsgiving is pleasing to God. And so it is, it is true that the, um, that the lay people should be working for, to um, help to uh, address structures within society that perpetuate poverty, that create poverty, um, that don't help those that are poor to work for that. And there, this is one of those areas where you know, there, there can be differing opinions on how that 
um, can happen, but the lay should have that in mind, but they definitely should have almsgiving in mind. Um, it's one of the spiritual or corporal works of mercy. Um, and they, we talk about spiritual and corporal works of mercy at some point during class, right? Uh, okay. Well, really quick. The spiritual works of mercy, instructing the, the ignorant, those who don't know the faith, comforting those in sorrow, forgiving sins, uh, and bearing wrongs patiently. Um, and actually, that's not all seven of them, and I honestly don't have them memorized. I apologize. Uh, but the corporal works of mercy are taking care of the hungry, the homeless, the sick, the imprisoned, and burying the dead. Again, that too is not seven. But, um, and then finally, the last paragraph is measures to help the poor. So the Old Testament contain many juridical measures to aid the poor. That's in, in the... Um, the prophets were talking about that all the time. Um, so it, it's something that we continue to need to do. The church offers many resources to the poor, including Catholic charities, Catholic relief services, aid to the church in need, all sorts of things. And the church is the largest charitable organization in the world. It does more for the poor than any other non-governmental entity. And so... If anyone doubts that the church really embraces the preferential option for the poor, just point out that no other organization does more for the poor uh, than the church does. So, okay, with that, I'm going to stop talking so that we can finish up our evening. So I hand it on.